right, okay, good. We're live. Let me um, let me take care of some business here. I want to share. Oh, let's mute, please mute. Good. Let's see how I can share. Sorry, this always takes me a minute just to share. Okay, I think I got it. And I know it's odd because I'm dodging away to look around the camera to see my screen. So sorry about that, but here we are. We're good to go. I shared and uh, hopefully anybody that is wanting to be a part of this lesson are able to, to join me. Um, also, I know that other people are watching this maybe at other times. Um, so good day to you, whatever time it is, wherever you are, whenever you are. Uh, thanks for, for joining me. We are gonna be doing this wonderful image today. <clears throat> Bring it up here. It's uh, I don't know how it is where you are. Where I am, it's blazing hot still here in San Diego. Uh, I think today it was in the 90s. Um, and uh, so I got this really cool <clears throat> photo of uh, some friends cross-country skiing. I, I think they're cross-country skiing. I mean, they might be doing downhill, but they're definitely on a flat area in this particular photo. And so it just makes me feel a little cooled down seeing all that snow. Um, there is a lot of lightness to this picture. It's not necessarily white. It's kind of like this pale grayed out blue um, because that mountain on the left is casting a big shadow right over the, the main part of the picture where the, the uh, people are skiing. So it's, it's all in a slight shadow there. It looks a little bit cloudy. Uh, so we're gonna do, uh, do our best trying to recreate this image. Uh, I have a whole bunch of different materials that I'm using. So maybe what I'll do is I'll flip things around and show you some of the various things that we've got here. All right, so watercolor paper, first off. If you're using water-based media, you really wanna have a piece of watercolor paper. It's absorbent, it's a little thicker, um, and you can, you can control the material a little bit better uh, through, through using watercolor paper. I've got my watercolors. You can see I've got my usual uh, you know, assortment, and then I've got my additional colors here that give me some, you know, pinks, some other purples, some other oranges, a couple of yellows. I just, you know, my, I've got my a kind of more of a sky blue here that I can use. So that gives me a little more uh, variety. In addition, I have these water soluble oil pastels. So I can draw with these and then if I come in with a paintbrush and a little bit of water, I can actually um, activate the pigment from the oil pastel. I know it's weird that it would be an oil pastel and also be water soluble, but that's how it is. Uh, somehow they've made the technology. And so we are going to uh, take advantage of that and possibly use that, especially in areas that are lighter. We can bring white back in nice and easy with these. Additionally, I have watercolor pencils. So um, these pencils, it's almost like the same as the, your oil pastels, except for it's a much smaller tip, much more control. <clears throat> you can put the color exactly where you want it to go. And then just like with the oil pastels, if you use your brush and a little bit of water, you activate those colors and you can spread them. And then I'll, additionally, I do have a white uh, watercolor pencil that I can use if I wanna bring some white back in and I need a little more of a point. So <clears throat> here we go. Um, I think uh, what I have to start with is the 
um, the sign there, that yellow sign, yellowy orange sign, I guess. Um, since I'm going to use blue as the base for most of my picture, um, yellow, if I put it on top of the blue, it's going to mix, it's going to turn kind of a greenish color, which is not what we want. So um, instead, I'm going to mix kind of yellow and orange together. I'll just use this guy here, and I've got my, um, my palette. So I'll start with this yellow. We want to get it nice and wet, and we're going to just lay it into one of these little cup areas on the palette. And then I'll clean my brush between colors. Then I'm going to go with this kind of bright orange. And I just, I don't need quite as much of that. Looks like I need more yellow to me. So I'm going to just add some more yellow. That's looking pretty good. You can see it's in the lower third. And it's further to the right, past the middle, right? So right around here. And it's like... A square on its side so this sort of diamond shape it's very easy to cover something light with something dark so if and when I decide to add in the the uh, cliff sort of uh, avalanche thing there uh, I'll do that in black and I'll do that later um, so that's good. I've got that as a start. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to switch to kind of a bigger brush. Uh, now, so here's a couple of different things to think about. When you draw something, so let's say I'm going to just use a, a, a lighter color of my watercolor pencil. So this is kind of like a... a yellowish brownish color goldenrod whatever and I want to bring out the side of my mountain and I can see it gets right down to here so when you draw you start in one point and then you little by little draw the edge Okay. When you paint, you just paint in the shape. So for example, like this is giving me the edge here. Let's say I'm going to come in with uh, this blue and I'm going to start making my sky so I can see it's kind of most concentrated right up here at the top. And then it gets a little bit more pale as we move across. We've got some clouds over here, so I can start to kind of play with those shapes a little bit and leave the white of my paper. That might change later, and maybe I'll bring some blue back in. But I think this is actually working pretty good. I can add a little more blue. We know it gets a little bit more faded out over here, so I'm just using a little water to sort of spread it over to the side there. Um, okay, let's get a smaller brush. So you see, instead of trying to create an edge, I'm just making the shape I see. So that's another way of thinking about, um, you know, when you make a painting versus making a drawing. I do have a paper towel in case I want to wipe a little excess off here. Um, okay, let's continue on. All I'm doing is sort of copying the shapes that I see. It doesn't have to be exact, but it does help 
um, to sort of give you a little bit of authenticity when you make it the way that you actually see it there because that's real you know Man, this morning I woke up and I don't know, I must have been grumpy. I, I don't know why. I uh, generally am in a pretty good mood, but for whatever reason, my daughter was getting on my nerves a little bit and I was kind of like just not feeling myself, just feeling kind of grouchy. And then it, it struck me. I realized, number one, I need to exercise. And number two, I need to paint. Get some balance in my life. And that's, that's pretty much what I've been doing today. Is getting a little balance in my life. Um, I did do some painting earlier today. Uh, I'm working on a nice oil painting and it just has felt so good to you know really make some progress on a piece that that is turning out pretty cool like I'm I'm liking it uh, that's not always it's not always how it goes so all right I can already see that things are not lining up quite the way that they should. Let's make a little spot over here for my blue so I can kind of make it a little more transparent. Just continuing to put the shapes in the main the main ones like I said things are lining up not quite right but that's okay it doesn't have to be exactly perfect we just want it to kind of have a good resemblance the great thing about clouds is that they come in all kinds of different shapes so most people are probably not going to be comparing the photo to the, um, the actual painting that I'm working on here. They're not going to compare my painting to the, to the photo. So i um, not super worried about that, but definitely, you know, it's the whole idea behind the thing is to make it close. <clears throat> so anyway, I hope that you are finding some balance in your life. Right now it's looking like not too many people are joining me today, so that's that's fine. You know, these are the type of things that people find later, and uh, hopefully people are getting some value out of it. So this is looking pretty good so far. Let's get a little more water in that blue so I can make some nice transparent. We can sort of start to create a little bit of a uh, mountain range down here, just the edge. 
or maybe what I should do is I should come in, well, let's, first off, let's just take some of this. I know this is all very pale over here. Let's, let's figure out how our mountains are going to go. So there's sort of this darker, um, it's like a bluish gray color. What I'm going to do is use this darker blue. So I'm using this darker blue. And on our color wheel, we know that orange and blue are complementary colors. So I'm going to use a little bit of orange, and I'm going to add it in here. And the orange is going to sort of take down the intensity of the blue. Ooh, it's a little too much. That's not bad. It's not bad. I just need a little more blue than that. So here we go. Looks a little bit green, but that's not too shabby. That's not too shabby there. So here we go. Again, thinking about the shapes that I can see over here on this side, we've got like a triangle shape. It's okay if we start off a little bit uh, light. The mountain kind of comes over the edge there. Then we've got another mountain comes in like this this is all dark on the top fit it all in there. I think I'm going to have to sort of truncate it just a little bit. But that's the idea. When you're filling in, you can always like make the edge a little a little further than you originally had it in, had intended. This part's getting squished together like this. I know it should be a little longer than that. that's not too bad and I can even con continue with this color if I want to and start to bring in this edge here yeah I'm kind of moving things down a little bit aren't I Hmm. Well, I'm trying to make corrections as we go. But yeah, that sort of just changed everything, didn't it? Well, let's see what we can do. Obviously, I'm going to have to move this over to here. Let's see if I can just erase gently any of that line. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. That came off a little bit. Wish I would have done that first. Well, 
something about hindsight, 2020, something like that. Here we go. All right, this is going to come in like this. So, not sort of the ideal situation, but but that's all right. We're getting there. All right. Let's start to fill in some of this. It's tricky because there's all these little puffs of cloud everywhere. But then you do have these kind of big areas of blue. Not big, but, you know. You got to pick them out. further in the back because that's f the closer you get to the horizon that's the furthest back you see so these clouds kind of get smaller and closer together back there and then up in here everything is a little bigger clouds are bigger and the spaces between the clouds are also bigger. Okay, so you can see I don't have any puddles on my page. We want to avoid puddles as much as possible. And we want to have enough water that we're able to, you know, spread our paint around smoothly without, you know, fuzzy edges. If you start getting fuzzy edges, then you probably need to add a little bit more water to your mix and if you're getting puddles then you probably need to use a little less water makes sense right but you'd be amazed at what, how a big of a difference that can make to somebody who's not also another thing you can see like I'm using just the very tip of my brush if I press down then my bristles are going to spread giving me a bigger kind of a mark and if I you know use just the very tip of my brush um, then I'll, bristles come together giving me a finer point and allowing me to do more detail work
Okay. <clears throat> Let's kind of get the side of the trail in here. Um, I'm going to kind of just stick with that blue. I think I'm going to use this other orange. And it will maybe give me a little less of a green tint. I don't want it to look so green. I want it to look a little more gray. So I'm guessing this one will do it for me. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so it's gonna start like here, and then it kind of comes right into my um, sign here. Let's add a little water so it's not quite so um, opaque. And it's just gonna kind of like that. Some sort of like wooden thing over here. I'm not quite sure what this is on the side of the trail. But it looks like some kind of a track. rocks and foliage and stuff this is just to get the the shape and a little bit of the color the darks and lights not so much to make it exactly the right color but I can see I'm halfway through on my time and uh, I need to make some more progress here okay Let's go a little lighter. And I can see you know, these rock faces. It's the same thing that I was doing with my clouds, but now I'm doing it with the, with the rocks. They're gonna be bigger towards the, the front here, the front and the left. smaller and really densely packed as we move back or towards the right. A little darker at the top up here it looks like to me. Try to let certain things be separate, be their own thing, even if it's just a matter of, uh, you know, just doing a stroke. Try to get the, the general shapes in there. I'm probably going to have to come back in, obviously, and make some more specific shapes and deal with some more specific colors. All right, let's um, let's add some darks in there, some like real 
real darks. I'm going with my this dark blue again, and then I'm just gonna add a little bit of black to it. Generally, I don't like to use too much black, but I think it's what it needs right now. And I'll still leave a little transparency. I think I need a little more black. And in fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of that orange again. Yeah, that is a little nicer. See how I just sort of fill it in, making the shape as I go, instead of having to do the edge and then fill in, it's like you're doing twice the work when you do things that, that way, in my opinion. Ultimately, you gotta do what works for you. You can see I'm just using the very tip of my brush a little more um, contrast there by making it a little darker. Okay. Ah, oh, geez, was that all off camera? Sorry about that. There we go. Get things a little more arranged here. Okay. Here we go. Let's, um... Let's move over to this right hand side here. So I'm going to use this blue and then I'm going to use that same kind of orangey color. Let's start with that. dark but you know what that'll be good for these trees back in here so I can just see yeah let's go in with a little bit of black for those trees go all the way back into here and then even up on this side okay Now, we've got this sort of like um, brushy 
brown color. Let's, let's get a little bit of this rust color in with it. And then I just want to dull it down with just a little tad of blue. Let's try like that. All right, so. Here we go. I can sort of create that ridge there another ridge back in here. This could be a little darker, couldn't it? That's all right. Let's just go with that. I think that's going to be okay. Again, just using the very tip of my brush. This is gonna be at the really base of my sign here. See these little ridges of like grass back here. And then like some really dense kind of bushy stuff happening over here. Now, let's get our, um, our sign in there. I'm going to use this as the, the post. And there are these orange kind of sticks that show the side of the trail, I guess. do the stuff up on the mountain up, up over here let's see um, that's the blue with that funky orange all right so I can see uh, there's like
trees. Again, just kind of trying to get these shapes in. I know I'm not getting the full mountain on this side. Okay, let's see if I can get some of these um, shadows. These are the shadows that are down in the snow, so I don't want them to be super dark. And I want them to read as a little bit purp uh, a little bit blue, maybe, maybe even this light blue, just a tad. So let's see what I can do here. That's pretty good. A little bit dark, maybe. Sort of trying to get these patterns in the snow. And then these bigger prints down here. Shadow through there. And basically, this whole thing should be kind of in a, a slight shadow. It's not really white. here. But there were some whites that I need to bring in here over on this side. Ah, didn't really work as I had hoped. But maybe I'll be able to see it better when it dries. Let's do our skiers. Okay. So I'm just gonna go dark, but not with black yet. So I see one person here. <clears throat> I'm kind of regretting not just using black, to be quite honest with you, but... And then let's, like, dull it down. <coughs> a little bit of the orange, All right? Here we go, because the back is kind of like this. I don't really 
see too much of the head. That's kind of how I see it. And then the skis, you don't really see. They're just kind of like down here. And then the poles. Let's get a little bit of black. Okay, one. Let's do the next guy. So I'm gonna go a little different here. Let's tone down this blue with some of this orange. A little too toned down in my opinion. Let's get a little more of this blue. And here we go. Our next person is gonna be kind of right over here. He's got the right leg coming down, my, to my right at least. And then the other leg is higher. And his leg kind of comes out just a little bit. Here's his butt. Um, let's see. Go a little bluer now. So we've got arm that comes down like this. And then this one is out just to the elbow. Like that. Head is like up here. He's got like kind of this brownish uh, backpack that is, you know, just kind of fits in here like this. I'm going to give him some little boots. Just kind of come off like that. Here you can actually see his ski a little bit coming up out of the snow right there. got away from me a little bit, but I think it's going to work out. Pulls, got one coming out like this, and got one coming out like this. Last guy, who's back here, head. He's smaller than the other guy's shoulders. Elbow, elbow. And then legs. Just like that. Let's do the, uh, see if I can make this sign. So, first off, a little stripe along the outside in black. On the right, we've got this cliff. Three. 
tree falling down here. And then we've got the pavement. And then the car. Eh, it's not bad. Let's maybe give myself a little bit of action on the side of this post. It's looking pretty good. Let's maybe add some little details over here because there's all these little dots that represent rocks and bushes and whatever else. doing pretty good we're nearing the end here maybe what I'll do since I didn't get these white stripes to really match up the way I had hoped is I'll sort of uh, it's a little dark just sort of make this a little fainter and create the areas between the white Not half bad. We could add, you know, all kinds of shadows. You know, I can see there's a bunch of little shadows and stuff in here. Maybe I would go a little bit, a little bit bluer, like up in here. I would use some of this darker blue. And I could just continue and continue working this thing and making it better and better, getting all the details. But I think this is not too shabby for one hour. I got all the main elements in there. Maybe I'll spend a little more time working on this one, but uh, I feel pretty good about it. We use mostly just the watercolors. I, I barely used any watercolor pencil. I barely even used any of my oil pastel, so it didn't go quite as I had thought it might. I really stuck with my watercolors, and, um, and I felt really good about just doing it that way. Um, so I hope that uh, it went well for you. I'm gonna flip things around, and uh, I'll say a proper goodbye. All right. Hey, I got a couple people. Hi, Becky. Mama Duty's watching. All right. Uh, well, I hope that you guys got a little something out of this. I hope that it uh, at least calmed you down, maybe healed you in some little way, made you feel a little better about the situation. We're making something, making a creation rather than destroying. So that's always going to be a good thing. Anyway, have yourself a wonderful week. Thank you so much for joining me. I love you. Bye.